Released in mid-2014, the Black Series Jabba the Hutt figure was the first in the line's Deluxe series. These Deluxe figures were to be bigger than the other figures or include other accessories, but this also came with a higher price tag. $40 in this case. When they first released an image of the figure in its prototype packaging, I was actually excited, because this giant empty space in the package could only mean one thing. We were getting another figure or accessory packed along with Jabba. Imagine my surprise when the retail packaging came out. That's right. Not only was there nothing but Jabba in the package, they didn't even try to make up for it with a cardboard background or anything. It's just so... empty. Honestly, it looks like a mistake of some kind. I mean, you can literally fit another whole Jabba figure in there with no trouble whatsoever. Obviously, including his throne would have been ideal, but they still could have included something, like a Han and Carbonite figure. Or maybe one of the Slave Leia figures that they can't seem to give away. Actually, I think I know what they could have done to make Jabba a surefire hit. Anyway, this was the first Jabba figure to not include any accessories of any kind. Even Jabba Glob came with some frogs and a container of slime. Not a great start for a deluxe line of figures, if you ask me. But the box is nice enough, I guess, if you can look past that giant gaping hole. On the back is an image of Jabba on his throne with Bib Fortuna. It's not until you get the figure out of the package that you get an idea of what it's really like. And it's fantastic! It's hands down the best Jabba figure that Hasbro has ever produced. The detail is excellent and quite accurate to the original puppet. Even the paint is pretty good. They've used more of an orange color than they usually do, and there are several different colors blended together. They did include his arm tattoo, which is both sculpted and painted, but they left out the scar on his tail. Also, his tail seems a bit stubbier than it should be, but these are my only real knocks against the sculpt. Interestingly, this figure, like all Black Series figures, was sculpted entirely digitally. You can see some of the parts that went into making it here. He's got all the articulation you'd probably want from a Jabba figure. His arms move at the shoulders and elbows, and his hands have cut wrists that also rotate. Move either of his arms and his mouth will open and close. As you can see, there's no joint or seam where his mouth is, and that's because his entire upper body is covered in a rubbery skin, which is a lot like what I imagine Jabba's skin would feel like. I like this action feature since it doesn't affect the look of the figure when you're not using it. I imagine this was somewhat hard to engineer, and probably contributed to the $40 price tag. When considering whether the asking price is a fair one, I think you also have to look at his size. He's really quite huge. Sure, much of it is just hollow vinyl, but still he's gigantic compared to the average Black Series figure like Finn here. This is particularly obvious when you see him from above or even from below. He's got a lot of mass to him, that's for sure. So is this figure worth getting even without any accessories? I say absolutely. Especially now that he's often on sale or on clearance. I've seen this figure sell for as little as ten dollars, and any Black Series collector who passes on this figure at that price needs to have his head examined. I may have bought a few extras. Unfortunately, there's one thing that makes this whole situation a lot more complicated. And that's the fact that Hasbro released a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive version of the figure. It came in a much nicer and more elaborate box, and also included Jabba's throne railing and hookah pipe, as well as an exclusive Salacious Crumb figure. It retailed for $65 at the convention, but for most people who weren't able to attend, the only ways to get it were eBay or HasbroToyShop.com, assuming you were lucky enough to catch one when they put them up for sale briefly. In most cases, that meant that the price was considerably higher, exceeding $200 at one point before settling down to around $100 now. The lid has teeth that are meant to resemble the door to Jabba's palace, which is a cool touch, but they are very susceptible to damage. It also won't stay up like in the previous picture without some kind of support, so you're better off folding it behind the box. It has a little holder for the 2013 SDCC exclusive Han and Carbonite figure. It comes with a cardboard stand-in, but it's easy enough to remove it and replace it with the actual figure. The front flap extends so far out from the front of the box that it's unlikely to fit on most shelves, so again, I would probably recommend folding it under the box. While removing the plastic from the box will take some of the decoration with it, leaving little white traces. 
it still looks pretty good displayed this way. The box is certainly nice, it's very well done, but what you're really paying for are the extra pieces that can help create a throne room display. His arm and wrist articulation allow him to hold his water pipe comfortably, and the opening mouth feature means that he can actually smoke it somewhat realistically. The water pipe has some nice detail, even though everything is just cast in gold plastic and not painted at all. It comes out of the railing, like this. In the bottom, you can see what are probably supposed to be some frogs. The railing is also unpainted plastic, and for some reason it comes in two pieces that slot together. This leaves a visible seam, which doesn't look that great. Overall, the railing and the hookah pipe are okay, but not fantastic. They do allow you to sort of recreate the feeling of the throne room, even without a full throne. But this little guy might actually be the real star of the set, since this is the only way to get a salacious crumb figure in the 6 inch scale. He's surprisingly well articulated, with ball joints in the shoulders and hips, and even one in the tail. His head also turns. The lack of any kind of full throne in the 6 inch scale has spurred many people to make their own, and I am no exception. I made this throne from scratch using Sculpey modeling clay over a base of wood. In hindsight, I made the edges a bit too rounded, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with it. I glued the two parts of the railing together and tried smoothing out the seams between them before painting it and the hookah pipe. I used a sort of a faux bronze look here. The gargoyle heads are from the vintage Kenner throne, with metal rings added. I sculpted these accessories from epoxy putty before painting them. I took a lot of inspiration from the Side Joe Collectibles throne. I touched up Leia's paint a bit and also replaced the cloth part of her costume. I also gave her a real metal chain instead of the plastic one she came with. I think she's a better figure than a lot of people give her credit for. This is a bit of an oddity related to this set, an AFA graded version. AFA is a company that grades toys based on their condition and then seals them in acrylic boxes like this. I'm not a big fan of this approach since it locks the toys away forever unless you break into the box, and it also tends to inflate the prices. I put a low bid on this one just for fun and ended up winning it for considerably less than what a non-graded version would have cost. Obviously it's just a black box, so sealing it away in this manner doesn't really make much sense, but I find it pretty amusing. In case you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of this toy, but I don't like the way Hasbro has marketed it. The normal version that was sold in stores should have included the railing and salacious crumb, and the exclusive version should have included a full throne setup. I think these would have sold much better that way. If you're a hardcore Black Series collector or a Jabba fan, I would recommend the SDCC set since it's the only way to get the accessories you need to make your own custom throne. If you're a bit more of a casual collector, try and pick up the figure on its own on clearance. They're still not hard to find. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button, and also check out my other videos. Although I do focus on Jabba the Hutt, I also review a variety of Star Wars related merchandise. Thanks for watching!